Welcome to the fourth episode of uh, this Corona series. Uh, this is, I, it's it's the uh, last not so mathematical episode, and it deals with uh, conclusions that we can draw from our qualitative uh, knowledge. Uh, that we have from the models and uh, the data uh, that I'm going to speak about uh, today. And uh, what I'm trying to uh, convince you of is, uh, in terms of uh, the data, uh, we actually have to use uh, the uh, natural immunization uh, to get to a stable uh, situation. Stable situation means an immunization of our population, uh, which is no longer allowing for a new epidemic to occur under normal conditions. Under normal conditions means not under lockdown conditions, but when we are back to normality, and uh, someone comes in from the outside, as it has happened uh, in uh, February uh, this uh, year, uh, that then we don't have actually an epidemic, but uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the number of infections uh, will stay small or bounded. So we are basically what I would call in the endemic state. So uh, what I was trying to draw here first on this blackboard uh, is uh, now, uh, uh, just to fix the ideas, it's uh, uh, a diagram where I'm writing down the uh, number of or the percentage of uh, susceptibles in two subsections of the population. And as I was uh, explaining before, the model says, uh, that we have uh, uh, two states, right, uh, in the subpopulation, such that if there is no uh, infection, uh, uh, that is, so is, there is no contact between the two subpopulations, let's say this way, then there would be, the stable states would be determined by a herd immunity as one star for one of the subpopulations, and as two star for the other of the subpopulation. So everything in this uh, rectangle uh, between that I'm drawing here, every such state would be stable. Every state outside of the rectangle would not be stable. Now, if we have the, uh, if one of the cause infection rates, either the one, uh, the population as two, uh, the second population uh, infecting uh, the first population or the other way around, if one of them is zero, then this kind of rectangle here will actually be uh, the uh, rectangle of the uh, stable states. Otherwise, we will be in a strictly smaller region, which we have somehow to reach. So I'm drawing this, I mean, this is a very schematic drawing, I'm drawing this like this uh, kind of thing. So, for instance, if the uh, if it would happen that the uh, two uh, that there is no difference between cross infection and infection, then this would be just uh, not not the rectangle which we have there, but just the triangle which we draw by putting a line between S1 star and S2 star. So it would be much smaller. Uh, so uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, thing that we should aim for. Uh, and of course, I will uh, claim that even uh, now, uh, so these S1 star and S2 star are not equal uh, to one. So uh, you actually have uh, uh, in, in these uh, subpopulations, you are not stable if one of the subpopulation is completely uninfected. And uh, uh, even under the conditions which we have now, so these kind of what I would call partial lockdown conditions with the uh, 
corresponding quarantining methods uh, which we have there. And why do we know that this is still uh, a situation where we, uh, where we have to worry about the epidemic, even though we have certain quarantining uh, conditions and so on? Well, we know this from the data from Iceland. So in Iceland, uh, more or less on, uh, well, the, these are arbitrary dates. I mean, March 4 and April 2, but they are more or less when the epidemic was starting or when the Icelandic uh, 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 peop, uh, uh, administration observed that there was uh, a transmission within the Icelandic uh, population of uh, corona. And uh, around April through, uh, they more or less had everything under control. And uh, how did they do that? I mean, originally, they were acting as we were, and uh, the epidemic was uh, actually uh, uh, taking hold. So there was a cause of the epidemic. The newly infected reached, in the end, they reached something like five per mil of the total population. But uh, uh, the point is that uh, the Icelandic uh, government, I mean, changed strategy, so they were no longer, as we are doing now, testing only those people with symptoms and who are uh, known to have been in uh, contact uh, with uh, uh, infected people, but they were testing a huge percentage of the population. In the end, it was 30% of the population, and doing that, they were able to discover more or less all the uh, uh, the uh, uh, still infectious uh, uh, people, and by this quarantining every one of them, they were able to stop it. Stop it means, of course, that you are getting to a situation with this quarantining, where under these quarantining conditions, the uh, uh, corresponding uh, uh, rate of infection is less than one. This uh, uh, what we sometimes call the, the, uh, the, the, the rate of reproduction of the virus is less than one and not larger than one. That was what I explained uh, in the third uh, episode. So, I mean, we are uh, uh, certainly still in the epidemic situation here in Germany. But uh, let me, because all of this, all of the discussion goes uh, also about how deadly uh, corona is. Let me turn now uh, to the, uh, uh, before I come back to this uh, picture, let me turn now to the German data, which are already uh, one week old. They are from the Robert Koch Institute, and I will just explain what these data are. So what can we see from the German data? So we have, uh, unfortunately, the data are not presented on the website of the RKI, uh, in uh, in this way, so I had to kind of uh, uh, process the data to come to these conclusions. They're not written down this way. So what do you what do uh, what do they publish? I mean, uh, they publish the uh, uh, number of people uh, who uh, have been uh, confirmed. So it's a cumulative number of ca of confirmed cases. And uh, they do this in several age groups. So they do it, for instance, in the age group. That's what interests me now. The age group 20 to 50, and in the age group 50 to 70, and then uh, above 70. And they also make the distinction they, uh, about their, so they publish who is in uh, nursing homes or in uh, pensioners' homes. So I'm just writing down in homes, and who is not. So uh, then what you see is uh, in this bracket here, uh, the uh, 80,000 uh, uh, cases that are confirmed correspond uh, to around 2.7 uh, per mil of uh, the uh, population. Uh, the uh, 57,000, which are in this age group, correspond to 2.5 per mil of the corresponding population in that age group in Germany. Uh, the ones, the, the people which, uh, are, which are above 70 and not living in homes, uh, there are only 8,000 uh, confirmed cases versus 17,000 for those people who are living in nursing homes or uh, pensioners' homes. 
And these 8,000 people correspond to uh, 0.8 per mil of the uh, corresponding population, which is around 15 million. And uh, these 17,000, of course, correspond to 17 or 1.7 per mil or 1.7 percent, so a much higher percentage of the 1 million that lives in, uh, in homes. And the uh, corresponding uh, death rate, when you look at it, of course, uh, you see that there's a huge difference between uh, the, uh, uh, the people below 70 uh, and uh, above 70, but you also see that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the number of deaths actually goes up quite a bit. Now, uh, what I did was I took the, uh, in, in order to get uh, to the uh, number of cases or the probable number of cases in each of these uh, sub age groups, which correspond to the, uh, uh, the, the, the deaths which the Robert Koch Institute uh, uh, gives us, I was just multiplying the uh, corresponding uh, fraction of the population with this 2.7 per mil. So I was thinking that this was uh, about the same uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, rate of discovery that we had in all of these three age groups and uh, also in these two age groups. And when you look at it, there is not that much of a difference between these two. There's some difference, but not that much of, the, of a difference. So it could be true what I'm writing down there. So uh, what, we, <clears throat> what we then get is, uh, that's what I write down in, uh, uh, in this uh, row, we get uh, uh, kind of the, the, the mortality in these uh, age groups in Germany. And uh, the mortality that we have here, of course, I mean, for nine people, I mean, even for 21 people, I mean, this is not, uh, uh, in reality, you shouldn't make statistics of them, but I wrote it down nevertheless. So, uh, so we have there uh, something like uh, 0 0.3 per mil mortality, 0 0.8 per mil mortality, 2.5 per mil, then we have nine per mil, and finally we have uh, 3% uh, for the, the uh, of observed mortality in uh, this age group of uh, 60 to 70, which is the last age group which still is uh, in the uh, working uh, population. So unfortunately, I, I'm not able here uh, to break it down to uh, five years uh, age groups, which would be kind of uh, relevant, especially here in the, uh, uh, among the people who are uh, uh, above 50. So, uh, what do we see from this? Uh, well, uh, we see two things. Number one is that this so-called observed mortality is more or less in line uh, with the general mortality. The general mortality, I got it by just looking in uh, the uh, uh, German statistical uh, uh, um, office uh, has the mortality for those people who lived, in this case, I took the, uh, on New Year's Eve uh, of uh, 2018, and then what was the uh, percentage of those who were dying the next year? And I took it here always at uh, 35, uh, 45, 55, and 65. Yeah, that's, these are these data which I have there. And there's a huge difference uh, as, well, one has to say, uh, uh, male and female, there is a huge difference. It's more or less that uh, the risk of dying for anyone male is about twice uh, that of a, uh, of a female. That's, uh, that's the fact of life. Uh, and uh, so what would we see? I mean, if we would believe that all cases which we have, all cases of infection, will be detected, this would be the mortality. Yeah, but it isn't, of course. So we are not detecting all the cases. One of the, uh, the facts of, uh, about corona is uh, that 60% uh, uh, of people do not, even in, uh, uh, among uh, the people living in homes, uh, uh, we know that from data from, uh, from Zurich, do not develop uh, 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 symptoms in some sense. So, I mean, of course, it always depends on what you call a symptom. 
but uh, let's say 60% will not be uh, obviously ill, so they will not be uh, considered as uh, people whom you should test. So, but if you are going to one of these uh, ho homes and you find that one person there has the illness and then you test through, uh, then you will find that 60% 60 uh, of the people you finally test positive uh, were not uh, previously uh, 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 discovered as being ill. Of course, then if you ask them and look at all the possible symptoms, you can reduce the completely symptomless maybe to even 20%. So, but uh, this is of course not what is what is happening uh, now in this case. So we have to uh, think that uh, even in this group here, in the group uh, of the homes that we have there, we are at this moment probably uh, maybe we have 17,000. No, not maybe. We have 17,000 cases discovered, but in reality, we should think that we have at least uh, double uh, these uh, cases because, I mean, unfortunately, we are not, or uh, the, the health authorities are not keeping up uh, uh, testing uh, routinely all the, uh, all the homes and especially the staff in the homes for the virus repeatedly. I mean, they did it once in many cases, so for instance here in Leipzig, but then uh, they didn't, uh, didn't continue. And uh, now we have definitely uh, new infections because, uh, I mean, staff was not tested uh, repeatedly. So, but still, when you look at this, it is kind of surprising, right? Uh, if you think that there are 17 per mil versus eight per mil. And uh, that is uh, between those people who are living in homes and those who are not living in homes. Now, uh, among those who are not living in homes, at least here in Germany, there are also many who are uh, uh, in uh, who have some time, uh, some kind of uh, 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 care at home by uh, services. I mean, uh, um, so-called ambulance services that we have. So. Uh, they, the risk of getting infected by, uh, by staff is, uh, is there for them too. So when I look at these, uh, uh, at these uh, uh, numbers, I mean, my own conjecture is that uh, basically uh, we are only discovering something like 5% uh, of the cases. Now, if that is true, then of course uh, you would have to divide every number here by 20 to get uh, to the uh, true mortality. I mean, doesn't matter. Divide by 10, which is more or less a consensus estimate, so it's, uh, it is uh, kind of lower than, uh, than my estimate. But in this kind of uh, way, what would you get? You would get here a risk of mortality in this last age group, which is 3% and is much lower then uh, the difference of mortality between male and females, just to uh, put that uh, into context, so more or less half of that, yeah, what you, what you have there. Could be half, could be one fourth. And uh, this uh, kind of uh, tells me that uh, uh, the uh, kind of, uh, the, the, the kind of fear which is created uh, uh, about the, uh, uh, of course, real uh, danger of dying from corona is uh, hugely overblown. And uh, it also tells me that uh, probably uh, it is, no, I, I, I will take away probably. No, it also tells me that it is an absolute nonsense uh, to uh, halt uh, large parts of the economy when you see that the mortality risk for those people in the active uh, population is on the order of magnitude, which is their mortality and lower than uh, the mortality risk they have in any case. Uh, so, when, uh, so my conclusion, and this is what I'm saying, what 
would be a sensible strategy rather than doing what we are doing here. So I think a sensible strategy would be to try to go uh, to uh, this uh, kind of uh, repeatedly, always to go in the low age groups, which have a very low mortality risk, uh, to the, <clears throat> uh, to the uh, uh, natural immunization first. And then, of course, you don't go exactly to the natural immunization. You go usually, you overshoot, you go to something a little bit uh, higher. But on the other end, origin, I mean, usually people, uh, when, when uh, things uh, start getting back to normal first, they are also a little bit more cautious so that you have effects of, of uh, reducing uh, your contact rate in any case. And then, so you, uh, after lifting uh, uh, these uh, restrictions or telling people to behave uh, normally in the low age groups, then you can see what is going to happen in the, uh, when you lift the restrictions for everyone. Large part of the, uh, of, of the potential of getting infected, large part of the potential contacts with uh, infected people will be, infectious people will be already eliminated then. So whatever there is, there will be a much Slow, much smaller impact on the higher age groups than we have now. And uh, it will be done at less economic and not only economic costs. So especially if you look at these age groups here, so 20 to 29, that is uh, basically, well, that is what uh, our students are and uh, what we have before. I mean, I didn't even show that, so there is not, uh, there, is also below 15, there is the, the rate of infection is in any case very low. But even in this age group 30 to 39, so what I, I would call uh, the uh, young adults, I mean, there is not that much of a risk. Now, if you are going to higher age groups, of course, the risk is increasing, as is, of course, slightly slower, but also uh, the risk of, uh, uh, of well, of a fatality in any case, so-called normal fatality. So taking that uh, uh, into account, what is, uh, what is going on at the moment? What is going wrong is that we are trying uh, to, uh, uh, to, to uh, kind of to, uh, let's say, conquer the disease, but without reaching a level of immunization which is even sustainable. And the bad thing is that uh, everything depends on uh, what you call normal, depends not only on this uh, 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 lifting the lockdown and so on, but it depends also on other things. So it depends on, uh, well, among other things, on the weather. So if we have the uh, November weather again, which is uh, sometimes also called the flu weather, then the effective contact rate uh, will be higher again naturally if we are going to have uh, something like uh, carnival celebrations again, there will be a high contact rate, believe me there. And uh, so the epidemic almost certainly will start later uh, in the year with a vengeance. And we can reduce the, quite substantially uh, the effect of that by using the immunization, the natural immunization via infection in the low age groups before. And that's what I'm uh, advocating and I'm certainly uh, uh, advocating also, that's another thing, uh, that we have to do something about this number here. And it's not so uh, difficult, uh, I think, to do that if you concentrate your testing capacity on these homes uh, and also on the other uh, people who take care of the elderly, then uh, a lot of these infections, I think, uh, can be uh, uh, can be avoided 
with something which I call a targeted quarantining on one side, and also a targeted use of those people whom you know already uh, uh, to be uh, immunized. One last remark uh, before I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm stopping uh, this uh, episode. Uh, after I prepared uh, this uh, last week, this, uh, this kind of uh, little series, uh, we got uh, the uh, first um, uh, big randomized antibody test. So what I'm speaking about here are also always the virus tests. So they, uh, uh, they, they uh, tell you someone who is actually infectious at the moment. But the antibody test, of course, tells you who is uh, immunized. And uh, these antibody tests uh, in the hardest hit uh, uh, province in Italy, the province of Bergamo, uh, gave a huge number of uh, uh, people who had obviously gone through the infection. It was 57%. And that tells you something about what we also have to expect in, uh, uh, in the winter and so on. So the natural immunization that we have under these normal conditions should not be at least much smaller, could be larger, but could not be much smaller than the 57% of uh, Bergamo. And uh, so uh, we at the moment certainly are not there at all. If you multiply that with uh, 20, you come, well, roughly to 6% and not to 60%. Uh, so thank you.